Hello, and welcome back to the uh, Particle Unreal show. Today, we're going to be digging into, obviously, particle systems. Um, in particular, yeah. <laughs> ribbon particles. So with that out of the way, let's just jump into our session. Let's just make a new ribbon particle, and I'll show you kind of how they work and... Um, you know, what we can do with them. So I've created a new particle system called Tutorial Ribbon. And the first thing we do, if we've just got an, an empty system, uh, we're just going to add an emitter. I'm going to look for empty because we're just going to go from a, a completely fresh slate. So you can see at the very start, we have absolutely nothing. Uh, first thing we're going to do, obviously, is we're going to get rid of our sprite renderer. Actually, no, you know what? Let's leave our sprite renderer there because I want to show you something interesting. We are going to go emitter update. Let's do like a spawn burst instantaneous. Oh, actually, no, you know what? Let's do a spawn rate. Um, we're going to spawn 10 particles per second. Uh, these particles are going to be very small. We're going to put them at like five or something. And let's just do some add velocity or something. Um, add velocity needs a apply oh, initial forces. Um, and our add velocity, we're just going to get a random velocity, random range, random vector. And our vector scale is going to be random range float. So we're going to let these move at between one and 10 units per second. Um, we also need to particle update, solve forces and velocities. Okay, so now you can see we've got these random little particles just kind of going everywhere. So when we're working with ribbons, um, kind of imagine a ribbon is like a particle that joins together other particles, if that makes sense. So if I click render and we're going to render a ribbon, you can see that this ribbon is just joining all of these little particle points together. Uh, obviously, it's like, you know, curving them really nicely. Uh, and it's just in the order that they were spawned in. So this is a pretty, I guess, crude uh, visualization of, you know, what's going on. But it is a visualization Nonetheless, so you can imagine when we're working with ribbons, um, when we do something like, you know, gravity or uh, actually let's do like a, a curl noise force. So that's how our ribbons work under the hood, at least by default. There are ways to, you know, choose, um, you know, what particles the ribbons go to. You can probably do it by like closest distance and that kind of thing. By default, it's just going to go in the order that they were spawned in. Uh, and because of that, if the lifetime of the particles is like kind of different, so if we just said random range float for the lifetime between, you know, one and 10 seconds, you'll see that the ribbon kind of rearranges itself, which is a little bit funky. So usually when we're dealing with ribbons, uh, we always want the, the lifetime to be uniform. So we want them to all have the exact same uh, lifetime. That way it'll always disappear from the end first. So if I just set this to like five seconds or something, you'll see that it disappears at the very end. So one thing that I think a lot of people uh, associate with ribbons is like weapon trails and kind of trail effects and that kind of thing. So you can see here, Whenever I swing the sword, there's this sort of smear frame behind it. Um, and I'm using a ribbon to do that. It's a very short ribbon, uh, but it is a ribbon nonetheless. And you can see that it kind of, you know, conforms to the trajectory of the weapon. Uh, and it's also as wide as the weapon. Um, and, you know, fades out behind it. It just, it looks pretty poggers. If we were to increase the lifespan, uh, so let's put the lifetime up to two seconds or something, something a bit wacky. Then you can kind of see it obviously exaggerated a lot. <laughs> and you can see that we, you know, we faded out from back to front, um, you know, using some 
materials and whatnot. You'll also notice that the, the texture kind of stays in place. Uh, there's no kind of texture stretching and that kind of thing. And we'll be talking about, you know, what all of the, the UV settings, like what all the texture settings are for the ribbon particles, uh, you know, later in the video. Another, I guess, interesting thing uh, that you could use it for is for like blood on melee weapons. Obviously this is an extremely exaggerated example, um, but you know, you could have a ribbon particle um, with this type of material effect. And you know, after you hit an enemy, you would, you know, spawn it on the sword and have it fade away after, you know, a certain amount of time or whatever. Um, I've got mine interacting with my landscape interaction system, but yeah, you can see that you can get some pretty cool effects once you sort of combine gravity and collision and all that kind of stuff with ribbon particles. It looks very goopy. And obviously we need to mention, you know, crazy anime AF, you know, fire trails and magic and all that kind of stuff. Um, as you can see by this little example that I mocked up here. Pretty cool. So yeah, there's really a lot that we can do with ribbons. Um, so let's actually just go through some of the settings and you know how they'll affect what we're doing. So just for the sake of actually, you know, having a demonstration, um, we're just gonna make these ribbons go downwards at 20 units per second. And we're gonna make them a bit bigger. So initialize particle. This is where all of the, the fun stuff happens. Um, the lifetime will set at five seconds. The ribbon attributes, we're gonna say direct set. We're gonna say ribbon width. Let's put it at like 20. So we've got a pretty good example. Um, we're gonna hit save and we're gonna go to this material that I have created, which is blank at the moment. And we're just gonna grab a texture and text coordinate. I'm gonna plug that into there. That's just set at default for now. Um, but the one thing that's really confusing for some people about ribbons is how they're kind of UV'd and how textures are applied to them. Um, so we're gonna get a, I've got like a, a UV grid. All right, after an unreasonably long time of looking, I finally found this texture that I was looking for. Uh, it's called Test Pattern 2. Um, and we're going to use this to kind of show what we can do with the UVs of a, a ribbon. And let's also just go particle color and we're gonna get the alpha of this into dither AA and put that into our opacity mask and change our material to, to masked. Okay, so you can see here that our particle looks quite angry. <laughs> uh, it's very janky. It's, you know, kind of stuttering. If we move it too quickly, you can see it looks like it's playing at a really low frame rate. Um, you can also see that the texture itself is stretched over the entire, you know, length of the, of the ribbon. Um, that's normal. One thing that can help with the sort of jitter, um, you know, at the start and end of it, on top of our spawn rate, we can use a spawn per unit. So let's say like every 10 units, we're gonna spawn an extra um, particle. So you can see now if I start moving this around that it kind of, it's a lot smoother than before whenever we move it. Um, so when we're not moving it, it's spawning like, I think like five or 10 every second. But when we move it, it's spawning one every 10 units that the emitter moves. So we're probably going to want to put that up even further, <laughs> I guess. Um, we can even put the, the spawn rate of this up. It really depends on how fast your ribbon is like kind of moving and that kind of thing. So if we look at it now, it is behaving a lot more smoothlier. So one of the things I want to talk about first in the way that the ribbons are UV'd is actually how the age of the particle is kind of determined in the material. So, so if you've followed my other video about materials and particles, I'd highly recommend it if you haven't 
already. If we go to particle update, uh, particle color, uh, and we go um, curve, color from curve, and we're gonna be using the normalized age of the particle. And what we will do here, um, as you can see here, it's fading out because we plug it into the, the dither. We are going to just give it a little tiny fade out at the very end by putting the opacity at one. And we're also going to do the same over here by putting it so that it starts at zero. So it's going to fade in and then it's going to fade out at the very end. Now this can kind of help with the, you know, that jitter that we saw earlier. Um, so you can see now it's fading in at the start and as it disappears, it's fading out. Now, the thing about passing attributes into the material with ribbons is that it actually interpolates along the ribbon. So if we say that this particle here, its lifetime is 0.8 and this one is 0.9 over here and they're connected by this ribbon, then all of those in-between values are actually still gonna be there and they, they get interpolated across the UVs of the ribbon. I hope that makes sense. So the other thing that I wanna talk about is the UV settings. Uh, so if we go to UV zero and we go UV mode, currently it is non-uniform scale by total length. So that's gonna stretch out our UV space or our texture, like one repeat of our texture along the entire ribbon that's been generated. So that's why when I was moving the, the ribbon around earlier, the texture was stretching out and then it was kind of catching up on itself. If we change this to uniform scale by segment, then when we move this around, you'll see that it's kind of the same thing as earlier. It's stretching the entire texture out along the, the whole ribbon, except this time it's per segment. So if I do it like really small here, and then really big over here. Um, it'll be more stretched out in the bits that were going faster. Now, this is me from the future because I lost the uh, the following clips, but the next UV modes are the, the tiled uh, view modes. So first there's the tiled by segment length. And if we have a look at this, then you can see as we move this around, it is tiling. So it's not stretching out from the start to the finish, uh, but it's also kind of moving along with the ribbon. Uh, but you can see, you know, whether I move it fast or slow, it maintains a fixed sort of uh, density, I guess. Now the tiling of this can be changed here uh, it can also be changed in the material using text coords and that kind of thing. Uh, now the next one, which is probably one that most people will find the most useful is tiled by distance. As we move this, you can see that it looks like the texture is staying in place. So this is really handy for, you know, everything, basically anything that you don't want to kind of move along with the, uh, the origin of the ribbon. You can see one kind of weird thing is when you keep it still, uh, because it's going from the distance that the, the origin has traveled, um, when we keep it still, it kind of just repeats the same like pixel of the texture over and over again, which isn't ideal most of the time. So you could counteract this by, you know, only spawning the ribbon when the emitter is moving to the speed of the emitter, or you could just use only spawn per unit. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is that UV channel zero and UV channel one have different settings. So we can have tiled by distance for UV channel zero, which is the default UV channel. And then UV channel one can be, you know, non-uniform scale by total length. And then in our material, we can actually use text coord coordinate one and, you know, break it out into just the R and the G. And then we can use this to fade out our ribbon. So if we look at it now, then you can see as we start moving this around, 
then the end of the ribbon is always fading out. So rather than using the normalized age of the ribbon, you know, each segment and fading out based on that, uh, we can just do it based on, you know, the very, um, the start to finish of the entire ribbon. So, you know, just another tool that's useful to have. Here's another cool little particle um, that uses one of the earlier UV modes. The reason that I use one of the earlier, you know, the, one of the first two, I can't remember which one, um, is because I wanted to kind of feel a little bit viscous rather than too kind of smoky. So as it goes along, it's sort of dragging the texture along with it. Um, you can see when I do it fast, yeah, you can see there's like little bits that are moving along the, uh, you know, the, the direction of the ribbon. Uh, it's pretty cool. And I've just added some, you know, curl noise. That's how we get all the, the little wiggles. Uh, and then as the normalized age reaches one, we scale the, the width of the ribbon down to zero. So that's about all there really is to talk about, you know, the very basics of ribbons. Um, a lot of it is just things that we've already talked about in this series, you know, all of the material um, communication between particles and materials and all of the forces that you can apply to particles and stuff. So if you've gone through those videos, um, you've probably got a pretty good tool set to be able to just experiment with with ribbons and stuff. The only thing that's really different between ribbons and, you know, regular particles is how they are textured, how they're UV'd. Now, one thing that I've intentionally left out of this video is exactly how I set up the, the sword trail. So you saw earlier when we had the sword and it was moving through. And even if the sword was like rotating and stuff, the ribbon was always following it exactly. Um, and like, you know, rotating with it, uh, which is something that's a little bit more involved in setting up. So I'll cover that in a follow-up video to this one. It'd be called like ribbons part two weapon trails, or I don't know, something like that. Because I know a lot of people ask about that because they used to be something in cascade it was like a preset that would do uh, like ribbon particles from two points or two sockets or something like that so i've got a little system that's set up that when you have a weapon you just put two sockets on it of a specific name and it will automatically like resize the ribbon to you know go to those um between those those points i guess so keep an eye out for that one. Another thing that we'll cover in a follow-up video is actually spawning ribbons behind other particles rather than the ribbon being, you know, attached to all the particles themselves. You can put ribbons spawning from individual particles, which again is a really cool effect that we'll cover in a follow-up video. So before we wrap up, I just want to thank all of the generous patrons. It's because of you guys that I actually have the time to make these videos. I really do appreciate all the support that you guys give to this channel. Uh, even if you're just a subscriber or even just a viewer and you haven't hit that subscribe button, I still do appreciate you watching this video. So I guess with that, we say goodbye. Goodbye.